Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to 10,000 and Below. 10,000 and Below is a series where I take a look at the games that are ranked 10,000 or lower on Board Game Geek. We're going through them a hundred at a time. We don't take a look at all 100. We, um, you know, I just take a look at the ones that are interesting, the ones that I know about, and the first and the last one. So let's get started. Today we are bookended by superheroes. So the first one we have here is the challenge of the Super Friends card game. So this game here from Cryptozoic is a lighthearted one based on the Super Friends. But what I kind of found fascinating about this game is that the card artwork in it uh, is basically all new drawn stuff. I thought for sure that it was you know, screen cap from the thing. They just did that on purpose. And it's a it's a very light game where you're trying to have the highest cards in front of you and then the cards have special abilities that knock each other out and around. It's really, really light. But I found it to be entertaining for a short period of time. Uh, so that's one thing to start with. Let's see. We'll zoom down here. Million Spiel. That has 99 ratings. And Attack with an E has 144. So Million Spiel, this came out in 1982 by Rudiger Colts. Let me see that name. Oh, he's the guy who did your bluffing. I really like your bluffing. That is a very, very fun game. Um, so this is one that has not done as well. There's only one pawn for all the players. It moves around. And you're betting on where the pawn lands. That definitely has a very old school look to it, right? Um, <laughs> that picture is like, yes, that's how people play games. They're sitting there and they take a break from the cocktail party to play some games. Huh. I wonder, um, I wonder like what people think about it. Uh, not a lot of people are playing it, just not good at all. <laughs> all right, fine. Here we have Attack with an E. This is from Reiner Knizia. It came out in 1993. So it was re-implemented by Gem Dealer, plus two more things. Ah, this is his original. I played Ivanhoe, and I've played Gem Dealer. I don't remember thinking either one of those was that fantastic of a game. Gem Dealer actually is ranked lower than this, and Ivanhoe is ranked in the 2000s. Yeah, I gave that one a 6, and Ivanhoe I gave a 6.5. They're essentially the same game. So they're all based on this one here, Attack. <clears throat> well, that's interesting. It's a Joost of Knights. Joust. Joust. Alternate pronunciation. You got to play cards. Huh. That's interesting. The, the older one just hasn't got much love at all. All right, let's continue down here. Seen it. Turner Classic Movies. That's very, very specific, I guess. Uh, this game here... Uh, there was certainly, I reviewed it last year, certainly a kerfuffle over the name, but they've renamed it to be Cool Catch. Um, in this game, you are trying to move around the little boys and girls to catch fish on the market. And you can move each one, and then you're just trying to move them to get to fish tiles. Really nice components, a nice little game. Uh, let's continue on here. The Cat. And that Cat came back. And then Penny Arcade, the card game. All right, The Cat. Uh, this one here, you're trying to change the moods. You have four stacks, and you're simul... Yes, it's basically trying to get four of the same kinds, almost like spoons, speed spoons, where you're switching cards from the middle or not. I found this to be hilarious, especially since the cats look so very similar that it's easy to forget which cards are where. You have to be in the mood for a speed-type game, though. Penny Arcade, uh, the card game. Now, I'm really surprised that this one's not higher, if only because I would assume that the Penny Arcade audience would rank it higher. And the designer, one of the designers is Corey Kineska. Um, Fantasy Flight did this game. I don't remember this. Epic battles between the characters. Was this, is this like a, huh? Well, I guess we gotta do what we always do. Let's take a look at the comments. A magic-ish game with set decks. It's small. It's a filler game. Bought it for the artwork. A tug-of-war game. Mostly you keep it because it's signed. Do not get this game. A bland card game. So it plays like Magic the Gathering. Well, okay. Interesting. 
I'm, again, I'm just surprised that it's ranked so low. All right, ta-ta-ta. I remember that game because that's one of those names that sticks with you. And the perfect heist. Ooh, I'm also going to look at this Luxantis because that's a Hobbit game. I like Hobbit games. Ta-ta-ta as an airplane-style game, a dog-fighting game, and this is from Angelo Parazzi. And I reviewed this one back in 2009, so 11 years ago. I gave it a 7. I suspect it's actually a 6, but I'm not sure now. Um, I remember playing the cards. I love Angelo's artwork. It's fantastic, but it's been such a long time since I played this. Uh, the Perfect Heist. This is from Everworks. I don't know if I know that company. Well, that would make sense. This is the only game that they've done. Came out in 2013. I don't hate the art, that's for sure. That's a cool-looking group of cats there. You know, they're, look at them. I, I, I like this artwork a lot. Oh, the cards. Ooh. Where's the cool artwork? Oh, well. I was enjoying it till I saw the, the design. The artist, Josh Alves, I'm assuming he's, no, I don't know. Interesting. Well, I, I don't know much about this. wonder if this was a Kickstarter. All right, Luxantis. Like I said, I like taking a look at Haba games. You're trying to capture Luxantis Castle, or shadow creatures are coming, and you need to stop them. You need to light up the labyrinth. And remember the arrangements of lights. Ooh. Ooh. I want to play that with my kids just because that's a really cool idea. I like that. That's neat. All right, let's keep moving on. Sonic the Hedgehog Crash Course. Um, oh, no, you don't. And Shakespeare the Bard Game. All right, Sonic the Hedgehog Crash Course. I played this game. Not a big fan of it. It's one of at least two Sonic Hedgehog racing games I've played. It's extremely slow, it's extremely lucky, has nice pieces, and that is about it. Um, I do not see a lot of people disagreeing with me about this game, unfortunately. Oh No You Don't is from Gut Bustin' Games, and so they make games that are very specifically for people who just want to play a silly Monopoly stylish type game that with a redneckish theme to them. Uh, in fact, I think the, the first couple games from this company were both redneck themed. And you can see here, it's just, it's kind of, uh, it's like that, oh yeah, oh no, you didn't, you play this with people, and they probably don't put, play any board games at all, but they'll play this because there's funny jokes in it and such. Shakespeare the Bard Game. This came out in 2004. Mike Siggins is one of the designers of it. Uberplay. I remember seeing this game when it came out. It's been a, wow, 16 years ago. You're trying to make money. You may recite a speech. You can busk. It looks interesting. The Shakespearean theme I'm, I'm pretty pumped about. Uh, again, I'm kind of wondering why this one would be ranked so low, so we go to the comments. Pleasantly surprised. A roll and move trivia game. Oh. Oh. Trivia is involved. This game's really great if you have some knowledge of Shakespeare's plays. As earning money heavily rise your knowledge of them. Oh, well, there you go. That would explain why it's rated low. If you like Shakespeare, you'll like it. Otherwise, not. Rat Trap. I, didn't I just review this last year? Maybe I haven't ranked it yet. Huh? No, I haven't reviewed it. It's a nice little... It's a nice little game about collecting cards. Has some nice artwork too to it. Hmm. Wonder why that one's not reviewed. All right. Barracuda. Four Seasons. Here's one. Monopoly Tropical Tycoon DVD game. Boo! I say that this is ranked so low. Boo! It is actually the best version of Monopoly that exists. It's really well done. In this game, which looks like a typical Monopoly and even plays like Monopoly in many ways, it has a time limit. It has victory points, player special abilities, multiple buildings like these that you can put down. You can build a casino or a park. The buildings do various things. There are random events that happen over the course of the game. And there, it's, I mean, the DVD part of it hasn't aged well, that's for sure. But I really like this one a lot. Really do. You can see eight. That's one of the highest ratings for this 10,000 billion that we found in a while. 
I do want to take a look at this Infinity game. Let's keep moving down here. Fruity de Mer. Uh, Cavemen. I played that one. Let them eat cake. Both of those games I did not think tons of, but not as bad as I did not like Kings of Mithril, apparently. All right, let's take a look at Infinity. Ooh. A classic Euro-style game. Looks very... That almost has a look of, like, tarot cards. I guess not. Oh, that's too... That's super, like, classy. Uh, 1974. Okay, it definitely looks like that. All right, Caveman. Uh, JKLM Games. Your tribe has to survive. When did I review Caveman? 2018 is not when I reviewed it. I believe I probably originally reviewed it in 2008 and just updated my rating then. Yep, 12 years ago. It's been a long time. You're just spreading out on the island. It's neat that there's like some dinosaurs and stuff in the game, but unfortunately there's way better dinosaur games now. Let Them Eat Cake, I remember. This one I do remember. Uh, you're in part of the French Revolution, and you want to get cake together. You want to send your opponents to the guillotine and get cakes. It's not necessarily the most PC of themes. has some nice artwork. The game is okay, though. There's a lot of randomness, and yes, it's funny to see a pawn on the guillotine, but that's about it. Kings of Mithril. Oh, I do remember this game. Oh, too bad. You're basically laying out these triangle tiles, trying to build tunnels to get into this mountain to find stuff. Super random. Not very good components, and super random. I did not like this one at all. All right, Essen. That's kind of a low ranking for the Essen game. Oh, we got to look at this one. The totally insane card game. And Alpha Bandits. Oh, I want to look at the demise of Dr. Frankenstein, too. All right, Essen is a game based on Essen. I would not have called it that. I would have just called it something else. It's about running booths at a convention. Um, it has also 8-bit artwork for, or 16-bit artwork for no reason but it's about having a booth there, getting people to come and play your games and selling games. And there's actually really good mechanisms to it. I thought it was a fine game. It just kind of really, really uh, trapped by its theme. It's like a really small theme for the game. I guess they're showing us all the Easter eggs in the game. But I liked it. The Totally Insane Card Game from Gary Fowler from the Totally Insane Card Game Company. This came out in 1993. It's like Uno. But with 27 action cards. <laughs> Done. All right, Alpha Bandits. Uh, this is a game of you build double letter words. You build. Ah, okay, so you get to build words, but other people can steal and mess with your letters. Yeah, that's why I didn't like it. The Demise of Dr. Frankenstein. This is from Mark Haney from Joe Magic Games. You roll dice, put them on body parts, and then Eager goes and gets them. All righty, I'm not. The artwork doesn't look good. From far away, it doesn't look good close up either. Eh, it's not really the artwork, it's the graphic design. Those kind of look cool. They look 3D printed. Oh, you're actually building bodies. Okay, that's. I don't necessarily hate that. I don't know, like, that doesn't match the front of that box. Mm. All right, let's keep moving here. Uh, Gold Armada has 78 reviews. Anticipation, 111. Oh, another 8, Invisible Ink. All right, let's take a look at Gold Armada first. This is from Reiner Knizia. It's a pirate-themed board game where you roll dice and try to collect gold coins. The better you roll, the more difficult it is to collect more coins. That's an interesting board. This is from Tactic. You know, that this box... And that board don't match. This does not look like the same front and back of the same game. That looks a little better. Hmm. It looks like a really light game, though. Anticipation from 1987. Also called Ant. Oh, it's Anticipation. Capture enemy ants to get parts of the ant queen. They're pictured in the bottom of the pieces. All ants are magnetic. And if the piece you try to capture repels from your piece, captures you instead. I like that concept. In theory, that's not a good board. But I like the idea that you can go capture something and it magnetically it gets you instead. That's, that's an interesting idea. It, I don't know if it makes for a good game. Invisible Ink, I like this one a lot. You can see what someone's drawing only with these glasses. So you are drawing without knowing exactly what you're drawing. It's a pretty, it's a pretty nifty idea. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you put the glasses on when you draw. 
and then you can't see what you're drawing. So you're drawing with the glasses on. It's like a nice little party game. It shouldn't be ranked this low, but party games often get short shrift on Board Game Geek. Also, not a lot of people play them. All right, who is going to do the dishes? Granny Apples. And 12 realms is 610 ratings. All right, let's, who is going to do the dishes? You start with six part of a meal, you reveal a dirty dish, or stack your cards. The loser's one with the most dishes at the end. He's one who will clean the dishes, and it includes a glove. <laughs> All right. I like the name of it more than the sound of the game. Granny Apples, this is a kid's game. It has some really neat pieces where there's, they're like these plastic apples. You need to flip them over. You're trying to find good apples. Not much of a game, though. 12 realms. Now, I got to assume, unfortunately, at this point, that this game is fairly bad. And here's why. Because a lot of games are down in these 14,000s and stuff because, you know, they don't get a lot of ratings. But when you have 610 ratings, you should be higher than this. No playability, no rule book, terrible rule book, don't want to play again. Kickstarter, too simple and overproduced. Like, you can look here at the ratings breakdowns, and there's a lot of sixes, so it kind of evens out. But that's an awful lot of fives, fours, threes, twos, and ones for a game, unfortunately. I never played this one, but yeah, this one did not, does not get a lot of love, unfortunately. Tushima, we'll take a look at that one. Let's look down. Can't Stop the Turtles, I guess you could. Conquest Tactics, I reviewed that four years ago. Planet Busters and Twilight Squabble. Oh, and Chromosome. There's like a trio of games that all have over 100 views. All right. Oh, this is a war game in the Sea of Japan in 1905 in the Russo-Japanese War. Well, there's a blue map. That's an awful lot of map. The thing about these that always kind of would make my eyes cross is it's, if you have to like sit there and I think you actually touch the counters and know where anything is. Oh, I, I like the cover here. Dunnigan is back. Oh, that's in that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not the cover of the game. It's in the magazine. So this is another one of those games that's in the magazine. There's a lot of those. Conquest Tactics, a strategy card game with a fantasy theme. Uh, I do remember playing this one. You're moving across a board, attacking each other. Very, very generic looking, unfortunately. And it uh, looks like a 1990s collectible card game. Planet Busters. This is from Troll Lord Games. This was also a magazine-style game. I like the little counters. Hmm. 118 counters, but obviously, again, it must not be that great because it's this far down with a lot of ratings. Twilight Squabble. Now, I had heard that this was the 10-minute Twilight Struggle game in a sense. This was done by AEG. This was one of the ones that I never did get a chance to play, I don't think. I've, I don't know if anyone on the Dice Tower played this one. Um, I wonder, again, I'm curious why it would be ranked so low. Short but strategic, it's good. Two player only. It's just a guessing game. And it doesn't give me any near, okay, yeah. So I think the people who are rating it low are probably unhappy because it's just a two player game and it doesn't have anything to do with the Cold War. Mm, that's fair enough. Chromosome, this is from the Cube Factory of Ideas, came out in 2016. A huge meteorite lands somewhere. The American government sets us a secret facility to contain it. Something goes wrong. All this stuff sounds cool. That's a cool looking board. Mm, neat looking, but it does not gotten a lot of positive buzz. Chromosome. All right, let's continue down as we go through here. Revolt AA. A. I remember that one. Ducks vs. Robots. We'll take a look at that in a second. Let's see what else we can find here. 3D Chess from 1977. Rhinefield. And Battletech Science Fiction Comet Book Game. All right. Revolt. Revolt AA. That's, that's, not, that's just a bad name. From Reiner Knizia. You got to choose which side you're going to play. I played this one. It's Decent. It is essentially you're playing these cards trying to be on the winning side, whether it's ducks or robots. It's a funny theme. Very abstract, though. It's a nice start to this game. Play this one. Yeah, they made Yugo, which is a pretty good trick-taking game. And Robo-Rama, I don't 
remember that one very well. I don't know that, oh, as of, I was about to say, I haven't seen anything from them in a while, but they've merged with Pumpkin Games. Who is Pumpkin Games? Well, apparently a big white block. Hmm. Interesting. I like their logo, though, Pumpkin Games. All right, 3D Chess. So 3D Chess here. This is from Star Trek, obviously. And as far as I know, anyone who ever tried to, when people saw this in Star Trek, they're excited. They're playing 3D chess. But at the end of the day, it wasn't that good from what I understand. It was a little messy. It's hard to make it. I bet when they put it on the thing, they didn't even have a game in mind. It just looked cool. Reinfeld, Reinfeld another game from James Ernest with some pretty ugly artwork, I think. Yeah, that's super gross. Maybe that's part of the reason that it's not ranked as highly. A trick-taking gambling game. There's four traits, a rank, a suit, bugs, and a dollar cost. That sounds like a little convoluted uh, trick-taking game. Yeah, and these pictures are just... Yeah, I don't like the pictures. I don't like the artwork. Battletech's science fiction combat book game mm. you look at the first oh it's, it's like those airplane games where you, you can see what your opponent's doing a lot of stats in this though nah. I would have played that in college alright we're almost to the end of this particular time we have crumbs which we'll take a look at here and then we'll end with Captain Marvel Secret Scrolls. I told you we'd end with another superhero. Crumbs is unfortunate. I really like the idea of this game. I backed it on Kickstarter. You put up this fence. You have your animals all running around trying to get the crumbs. And you all move, get in position. Then you throw the crumbs in. So there's, no, there's all this maneuvering. You can kick people out. You can fight. But it doesn't matter because you don't know where the crumbs are going to land. It is a, an insanely weird one rule ruining the whole game thing. Really great pieces, though, but uh, I really didn't like that rule. Captain Marvel Secret Scrolls. This is from the op. This is a game that I meant to play at some point. It's a hidden identity game, which actually works with the theme of the scrolls. Um, I don't dislike the art on the, the cover. I, I like the theming of it. it. This one just didn't get a lot of buzz. Fun hit and roll, just awful. It's a bang ripoff. Game seems unbalanced. Get one person to play as Captain Marvel who immediately gets piled on by everyone else in the game. Well, pretty close to bang. Interesting reinventation of bang. Oh, so it must just be bang. Okay, oh, I see. It does it here at the top, reinvents bang. I'd give it a whirl. And that's it. We've made it to the end of another list. If there's a game there, you said, why don't you talk about that one? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching 10,000 and below. See you next time.